Around this time two weeks ago, the entire country braced itself for the inevitable. A Category 1 hurricane was coming to make landfall somewhere between Belize City and Dangriga. Many hoped for a miracle that somehow its path would have been diverted, but it didn't. Hurricane Lisa barreled through central Belize, taking with it foliage, roofs and homes, as well as plunging Belize and Kaya districts into darkness. Today, many are back to work and school, but the damage is real and some won't recover anytime soon. So over the last 10 days, what we've done is the, the immediate disaster response. So supporting people with um, food packs, supporting people with water and, and, and supply uh, materials like tarps and other things that people need right away in order to be able to respond. Then there is a phase of now transition, um, providing people with sort of long-term support, um, long-term support to, to continue the, the path of recovery. Over 5,000 families have been affected directly and indirectly. Chief Executive Officer in the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management, Dr. Kenrick Williams, says that several assessments have been done so far, and even from an initial look, there are millions of dollars in damages. We have estimated plus or minus about $75 million or so in damages as a result of the uh, Hurricane uh, Lisa. Vividly along the streets and highways across cities and villages, there are power lines and transformers that have been damaged, lampposts snapped, and electrical wires down. The impact on infrastructure for the utility companies was severe, even though for the most part, power to homes was restored within days. But that disruption of power had a rippling effect on other utilities and services. Power plays such an integral role that if there's no power, there's no water. The water is affected. Um, the telecoms industry is also affected. Um, small business owners, large businesses, we look at BPOs, um, always trying to keep their operations 24-7. But the reality is that if, if in terms of a natural disaster, if they don't have a generator, they don't have power. My approach to this is, is looking at the damages and effects of Hurricane Lisa. We need to do an assessment. Let's grade ourselves. What is the grade we would give ourselves as the utility, power utility or electricity, um, telecoms and water in terms of how we restore? And from a committee standpoint, let's look at the approach. And while Hurricane Lisa was a relatively dry weather system, it did cause damage to the agriculture sector. Agriculture CEO Servalo Baiza tells News 5 that the sugar industry in the West was hard hit, as were some farmers in both districts. While the assessment at this point is showing some $20 million in losses, Baiza says there will be no impact to food security. A little bit of grains were lost that, were, that have not been harvested that yet, but not, not, not much. Um, a lot of uh, some of our vegetable producers lost some of their, um, their produce. Um, the sugar, sugar industry, um, also took a battering Santander, you know, their fields were all flattened out and that will also reduce the yields that we will be getting from those fields. Um, so that, that's basically some of the damage and to some of the infrastructure, um, you know, the factory, for instance, Santander factory got some damage um, and some of the, uh, the other areas um, some, um, in the poultry sector, some of the, the, the chicken um, facilities there were damaged also in Spanish lookout. So these are, these are the damages that we received. Are we expecting that this is going to trickle down to consumers in terms of um, there will be shortages of any of these producers? Um, I, I don't view, uh, at this moment, I, I don't see that happening. So what's the next step for the country during its recovery and ensuring that it is resilient against another storm of similar or greater magnitude? What is going to be important for us and what we want to do very differently is that we want to do very comprehensive damage assessment, which is not um, a rapid analysis of, okay, your, your house get destroyed, it's more or less cost this much, but we're looking at the broad scale. What are the, the damage for each sectors? Uh, so we're going to do some, uh, we're going to use some methodology, the, the um, housing and building damage assessment tool from the, from the United Nations Development Program, the UNDP, for example, do a full-scale assessment. Because it can't just be building back, but it has to be building back better. So how do we ensure that the, the damage assessment influence things like codes and standards and, and that type of thing going forward? Dwayne Moody for News 5.